I'm Peter Brown from Tiny and Sons Glass. Tiny and Sons Glass was established in 1978 when my father and brother and I were at 575 Washington Street in Pembroke. We're certified and qualified to do all your windshield replacement and repair. Tiny and Sons Glass is a community-based business. We have 12 mobile vans that come to you. If the weather's bad, you can come here to the shop. We have a nice waiting area, TV, Wi-Fi, kid-friendly, pet-friendly. We also can move about 15, 20 cars a day through the shop. Perfect for you when the weather's bad. So come on down to Tiny and Sons Glass if you need your windshield replaced or repaired. Tiny and Sons Glass, 1-888-64-TINYS. Just call. Thank you. Today is Monday, April 9th, at about 5.05 p.m. I'll begin our meeting with our chairman's statement. Please note that this meeting is being made available to the public through an audio recording which will be used to ensure an accurate record of proceedings produced in the minutes of this meeting. All comments made in open session will be recorded. So first in our agenda we have Mr. John Poria who is before us. He is going to update us, update the board on the status of the field house. So Mr. Poria, welcome. Thank you. Have you and have you met our newest board member, Mr. Newman? No, I don't Newman? think so. No. Hey, oh, nice to meet you. Um, so the tree, guy, the tree guys out there this week, they'll be coming out this week. Um, they called Dig Safe to go out and market, and, the, and they called Merrill Engineering to mark the tree lines so they know exactly where to cut. So we're good to go. The storms pushed us back a little bit. And we were waiting for the, we're submitting a plan to the planning board for the drainage. So we were waiting a little bit for that before they started the septic to make sure all the elevations were correct. But the tree guys are out there this week. Merrill should be out there this week marking everything and dig safe to be out there. So when the tree guys, is there an appointment for lack of a better question? They're finishing up a job. I talked to them on the way and I go, listen, they're going to want an exact date. They're <laughs> finishing up a job. They'll be there. They told me they'll be there this week to take the trees down, make sure Merrill goes out and marks where the sock is going. And Dig Safe is supposed to be going out there tomorrow to mark everything off. Okay. So uh, we're, we're good to go. They ordered the tanks, the big tank. He said it's a week to 10 days out, the two big ones. So he goes, everything should kind of line up because I guess once they take the trees down, the tree guys don't take the stumps out. They have to come take the stumps out. So he was planning on taking the stumps out the beginning of next week and start digging. So. When do you think the septic will be in? And, and you're not looking into a crystal ball, yeah. I know that. I'm hoping as soon as possible. I mean, the tank, the trailer has made a huge difference on the complaints. We're not getting as many complaints about the porta potties because we have that tra the trailer out there now. Um, it's just we have to have them service it like every other week because they stop on the thing to flush it because it's not a handle, you use your foot. So the kids jam them, so they're actually going to go out and fix one tomorrow. Um, but he told me that once they actually start digging everything, it's two and a half, three weeks for operational septic system. He said that all depends on when they finish everything. I guess it goes, you guys have to go out and check it. Yes. Different stages. Yes. Um, and then he said the paving and the final grading might be a little later than that, but the operational tank will be there because... The final grading, we have to get the approval from the planning board on the, the drainage, how we're draining to the front and the back. So that kind of held them up a little bit because the septic is higher than the rest of the lot. So Merrill had to design it for where it was going, so they wanted to make sure the grading was all kind of lined up. So I had a meeting tonight at 7.45 with the planning board for the drainage. Just, just as a point of information to the board members, please understand that while obviously this board is highly concerned with the septic component, this is a, a five-component plan. Mr. Poirier has other requirements to other town boards, specifically the planning board regarding parking, um, as well as final aesthetics um, and an egress issue that needed to be addressed, creating another egress, um, plus adding additional parking, which is one of the reasons this is a more expensive septic system because it will be able to be parked on and there is some significant grading that needs to be done at the side of the building because of former loading docks and former uses as well as to create a grading and slope around the building as to not flood the building and to shed the water appropriately and not at the abutting parcel um, belonging um, to uh, 
I'm sorry, I'm forgetting TK Properties. I'm sorry, I had to think of the, the name of the property owner. I apologize. Um, so while we are highly focused on the, the septic component, unfortunately for, for Mr. Poirier, or fortunately, depending on how you want to look at it, he has other moving components that the septic installer will actually be responsible for. Um, that is, making sure those grades are accurate as well as the installation when complete is going to support and have appropriate grades for automobiles to traverse that area. Um, so he does have some permitting issues with the planning board that will also have to be addressed to make sure the project as it moves forward. But a, a very smart move by Mr. Poirier was to retain the same engineering firm um, to both handle his engineering needs here at the Board of Health as well as up at the planning board. And forgive me if I'm, I'm advancing too far, but you do have an application now submitted to the planning yes. board, I hope? Yep, Merrill's That addresses submit. the egresses and the parking yeah. issues and such? Yeah, he submitted all that stuff today. Fantastic. So, yeah. so, Lots of moving pieces. Okay. So um, will you remain open during this whole process? Yes. So you still, he's still allowed to... Uh, it is a temporary rent. permit at the, at the pleasure of this board. This board can rescind that permit yeah. at any time if, if that need becomes. Um, I was out there today. It is in appropriate condition today, but um, forgive me. The goal was that you had a 30-60 day, the 60 day being the outside goal to be off that unit. The yeah. last we spoke, is that still hopefully that 30-60 window? Yeah, we're hoping, I mean... The sooner it gets in there, the quicker I can get rid of that because yep. it cost me big money for that. Absolutely. And then I got the porta potty, so I pay thirty five hundred bucks a month for the trailer plus yep. the porta potty. Yep. Yep. Never mind the the customer convenience, and of course yeah. you're trying to enhance the facility interior. Yeah. There's some enhancements inside going that uh, obviously are going to be a challenge without a functioning bathroom. So. Yes. And I'm sure you'd like your full food food permit back at some point yes, as well. Yes, that's hurting the wallet. Yes. Yes. You know, that, that, the question I had after looking at it, I saw that you, you had somebody um, come in, not the engineering firm, but the excavation firm that's going to do the work. Yeah. Have you, um, are they the ones that are going to be doing the work? Yes, they're going to be doing, they have a tree company that takes the trees down. Right. Then they pull the stumps, they're doing the... So they have the subcontractor that takes care of the trees. Trees, and then, and then they do the rest of the work. Okay. They're doing the grading and everything for, and installing the septic. And have you, even though you've hired the engineering firm, um, have you, have they, have you had to pay them to start? Merrill? The, no, uh, the excavation firm. Yeah, we gave them the deposit. I had to give them the deposit so they could order these tanks, because the tanks were a six to eight week leeway. So you as well, you want this process, because yes. the reason I ask is I, you know, in reading all this, I saw that there's a big paper trail of oh. certain times when we asked you to, they bore this board before yeah. me, asked you to yeah. do things, and uh, I just wanted to make sure that we could get some commitments in the sense of, you tell us what's going on, and, and instead of paper, more than you guys. Too. Yeah, okay. Because it just it because, just kills me because like, right. like the snack bar, we make a lot of money off the snack bar. All we have now is chips and candy bars. And you used to have hot dogs, yeah, pizza, hot popcorn. Dog, pizza, popcorn. Yeah, I've been to the yeah. facility, and yeah. I, I do enjoy the uh, <laughs> the sitting area to watch the events yeah. that go on. I do like that, yeah. but I just wouldn't want to see you know you lose it all because of, you know, the lack of uh, oh, yeah, production. No. And so, we were, I was hoping yeah. they would have started already, but they were, the contractor was rebuilding beaches in Marshfield and Situate, and then the tree guys, they were like, they're not coming out there to do a job out there for you for two days when the state's paying them big money to do all the work for them, so. Now, I, through, through our um, health agent, I wondered, can, can he lose his food permit if he doesn't? If this was not prepared, yes. Um, long story short, you're not allowed to have a food service permit when you have indoor seating, which his facility, of course, does. Um, long term, that, that could not continue. A temporary bathroom is not an appropriate yeah. um, service unit for a food service establishment, which, of course, never mind the fact that you had to reduce the packages when you lost your bathrooms yeah. for cleanliness, but then to further lose the permit altogether, of course, yeah. would not be advantageous for you or your business. So, But uh, that's why we have temporary units. This happens to restaurants. This because happens at times, but we do have to rectify it. Because you're a year-round facility. Yeah. So we have guidelines, I'm sure, yeah. that yeah. certain things for, the, for you know, uh, seasonal things, but where you're year round, yeah. I'm sure we and we get the calls in this office. Oh, I know. So we want to we want to work with you, but we don't want to see that continue. Yeah, no, and, we uh, want to. I mean, they told me they're right on top of this. They okay. want to get it Fantastic. done too. Sure, that's good news. So, that's and good bring news that revenue me. stream back. Yeah, it's a yes. big, you know, it's a big much place. needed yeah. revenue stream. Yeah. Yeah. Much much needed revenue stream. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Uh, just a couple of comments, sure. Mr. Porter. I had asked our administrator, Shirley, and yep. you've spoken to her on yep. a few occasions. Yep. I asked her to prepare kind of, for me, a little internal yep. timeline, yep. if you will, just to help me get a better sense okay. 
uh, at the time when you had the first outbreak. Yeah. I was a member of the board. I was not yeah. chair of the board. So yeah. I wanted to get a better handle. Okay. And Sheila, I thank you for preparing that document. So we're kind of in, into, you know, this yeah. month it's it's two years when, when you had the first outbreak, a April of 2006. Not 2006. 2016. 16. 16. Two yeah. years. Yeah. Yeah. So we originally thought it was a broken pipe when we did the temporary parking lot there. That's when everything started happening. So we thought it was just a break in the pipe. And then after they went out, they dug it. They couldn't find it. And then we tested, and they like this thing isn't perking at all. So then, then we started the whole process of trying to get the engineer designed, getting that in place, and then. I honestly, I took probably three months, almost four months, trying to get prices, just because I could not believe. You're moving the price. in the right direction, yeah. but just uh, that concerns me. When I said, when I looked at the timeline, I said, "Well, this has kind of been going on for two yeah. years. You've actually had the trailers for it'll be eight months. It was uh, August. It yeah, was my had, wife's birthday. I know the date. Yeah, yeah. August seventeenth. So we got the trailers, and yeah, yeah. So it's coming up on eight months. So, yeah. uh, and our health agent just alluded to the fact that. You temporarily, you don't have the food service <coughs> permit, but you still got the retail f food permit. Yeah, we still Serve candy the bar, everything's wrapped, yeah. Yep. Yeah. What I would like to ask of you, okay. I'd like to see you here yeah. two weeks from tonight okay. with a progress report. Okay. Um, I, I'm anxious, maybe not as anxious as you are. But I'm, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know, an understatement. I'm sorry, I don't mean to chuckle, but I, I think it's been a long road of hope. For this office, obviously, with people and their concerns, and I'm sure yeah. it's been, as a, as a business owner, this yeah. is not the way anyone wants their oh. business to be performing, and, that, and that's a tough position to be in. Yeah, no, I understand it's around. been a lot longer than I anticipated by far. Yeah. So I have no problem coming in, like I said, and giving you an update in two weeks. Yeah. No issues at all. I don't want to speak for the entire board, but I'm, I'm anxious to finally see the work and underway. So, like so, I said, so you, are, you are as Personal well. appearances sure beat letters and paper trails oh, I, I and agree. phone calls. So I think it would help all of us yeah. so we can see. And it would take a few minutes of your time. Yeah, no, you know. no, absolutely. No, and you've got some wonderful plans for inside of the building. And, and, and just from a personal note, I think you're on, on the track, if you would, to be a very nice facility and a very nice... Um, use other than just athletics. I know you're, you're looking into some other um, uses that would be appropriate to the facility, especially once your parking issue is straightened out. But I think, you know, the town truly desires successful businesses in Pembroke. We want to help you get there. We really do. Oh, no, you guys have been unbelievable. We're trying, we're trying to do everything helpful, we can. And I, so. and I promise you one thing, that your septic project will not be held up on my account. I will be out there as many times, as often, as frequently, as early and as late as I need to be to make sure that that moves along as streamlined as possible for you. Yeah, I appreciate that. It would be perfect. I mean, I just want to get it done. I mean, because we've been talking to a couple of people as we ask you about doing like a taste of Pembroke all the restaurants there. And they're looking for a new place, and that's a booster is one of their biggest revenue streams, so I think that would be a, a wildly successful event if you could help them host that and everything else. Yeah, just uh, we did that boat show, it went very well. And a wonderful okay. event for your, your facility yeah. as well. So Okay. We're moving forward. We're moving forward. <laughs> so Sheila, can you put Mr. Poirier on the agenda two weeks from tonight? Sure. Same time, same batch show? Yeah, it's 5 o'clock. Yep, right for me, yep. Super. So thank we'll you see very you much. Good night. luck upstairs. Yeah, thank you. Seven forty-five. Yeah, you, you're just gonna have yeah, you're just gonna have a wonderful tour of uh, the Pembroke Town Hall tonight. If they yes. do invite you back in two weeks, let me know and I'll slide you up a little bit later. Like, you know what I mean? Oh, okay, for upstairs. Yeah, they. Yeah, hopefully Peter's got everything right, so there's no issues. <laughs> we'll, we'll I would see. imagine with the reputation of Maryland Associates, I I would be very surprised if you have any significant issues. Yeah, no, that was one of the reasons they've they're very done good. fabulous yeah. work straight on through here. Yeah, so. Uh, All right, so thank 5 o'clock next yeah. week, and then I'll let Not you know. Not next week. Oh, two, two weeks. weeks. Yeah, two weeks. And I'll let you know if they uh, require you back. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. We'll stop there. Yeah. Thank you That'll again. Be, they don't really discuss the plan because it's not on the agenda. They'll acknowledge that they had it. Oh, they're not. You might want to just check. You might want to go up and check if they're not going to see you. You are on the agenda, but they, they won't be able to actually discuss the plan because they just got it and it's not on the agenda. They got just ask the, just okay, ask the gentleman upstairs to make sure before If they received it, then you're free to go and then... All right, yeah, if I don't have to discuss. come back, I can practice. I've got a coach cover, so yeah. I don't have to come back. That works. But if you check upstairs, they'll yeah, be able to tell you. Yeah. Okay. okay. I just don't want to waste you, you, have you sit around for two hours for nothing. Yeah. <laughs> that would be unfortunate. All right. Thank you very much. You're Thank welcome. you. Have a good night. Have a good evening. Nice to meet you. Thank you. Okay. <laughs>
Well, that's good news, Mr. Thorne. Good evening. Thanks for coming. My pleasure. We've got uh, a 545, our third segment of Aid to Educate, and I'm, I'm glad to hear the feedback from the board, how much my fellow board members love our new segment. Thanks, Mr. Newman. Very Did kind. you send something about that? I'm sorry? Very kind of you. So we also have a homeowner coming in, Mr. Reardon, at 6 o'clock, looking for a variance on his septic tank. So we're going to move right to the minutes, our fourth item on the sure. agenda while we wait for our 545 appointment. So we've got three sets of minutes. We're finally catching up, Sheila. Thank you. We've got our minutes from the 26th of February. Actually, excuse me. We've got our minutes from the 12th of February, the 26th of February, and our first January 22nd. What do we have left, Sheila? Uh, this is the last one. The last meeting, okay. Uh, it's the 12th of uh, Mr. Chilcott and Gotcha. Okay. We'll have those two weeks from tonight? Yep, along with tonight. Great. Thank you. Okay. Do I hear a motion on our minutes from our last three meetings? Do you want to do um, all three in one, or do you want to do one at a time, of, uh, you know? Uh, the pleasure of our newest member. I'll leave that up to you, well, Mr. Newman. Well, since there is one that I wasn't at, I think I'll uh, take that and then the other two out. So there's uh, minutes from the January 22nd. If the chairman has looked those over and feels there are no uh, uh, changes needed, uh, I'll make a motion to accept them because I wasn't there. Okay. I was not on the uh, board yet. I'll second that motion. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So our minutes for the 22nd are accepted. Okay. January, yep. And then having read over the February uh, 12th and the February 26th of 2018 minutes, I'll make a motion to accept the minutes of those two days. I will second that motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Minutes for the 12th are accepted and... Aye. 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 Yep. Aye. Yep. And also the... Uh, do we have the... Uh, the 26th in there too? Uh, I'll make a motion uh, to accept the minutes from the 26th. I will second that motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. <clears throat> Excellent. Thank you, Mr. Newman. Sheila's worked very hard and diligently to get all those done. You know, small feet. We actually had that. I was in the office one day this week, and we had that dis very <laughs> same discussion about the minutes. It's, it's no easy task, no. I'm sure. Especially when you're, you're constantly trying to assist the public as well. It does no create question. quite a train of thought issue. No question. Okay. Um, I've been a secretary before, and uh, it's one of my favorite things. And she does. She pays great attention to the meetings, and uh, there isn't anything left out. So I want to uh, compliment her on her uh, minutes. Mrs. Cullen, are you prepared to make a presentation on the health agent's report? I would be happy to, Chairman. Okay. Um, and before you begin, oh, sorry, go ahead. I, I just, Sheila, yes, sir. did you make a photocopy of the health agent report? That? Oh, yes, I did. Okay, I didn't seem to get that. Before I sent it over. Hold on. No problem, take it down. Did you get a copy? It was hot off the press. There's the original report, and then, of course, there's an addendum to add the last two weeks, the original report prepared for the last okay. meeting. And then she just added to it. So and then I added the addendum for the two weeks that, of okay. course, weren't, weren't there. I was trying not to kill a surplus of trees over again unnecessarily. Okay. You're good. So I think we've pretty well covered the field house, having had um, a nice discussion with Mr. Poirier about the progress and the future plans. Um, I wish him all the success with that. Moving along, Pembroke Hospital, we are still waiting for the final um, evaluation from the DEP, but all the final plans have been submitted to them. We should be getting a response from DEP sometime this month. Um, I believe they have a two or three month window to review this. Um, the BioClear Tower number two still is in failure. It has not been fully assessed, um, but the state did want to take a look at that from an educational standpoint, but that has not occurred at this date to the best of my knowledge. Um, we have not received an update on that. Um, obviously, uh, office activity, it's, it's hitting spring. We're up to two and three perks a week. We're up to um, six or seven installations a week. So we are really picking up steam, um, lots of interest in um, available properties. <coughs> Excuse me, in Pembroke, as well as banks 
um, seemed to be at the end of the March quarter making a push to liquidate um, some of the bank held properties which is nice to see there seems to be some interest and activity on those obviously it's in the best interest of the community that those um, properties be um, re re put into use whether it be flipped um, sold to homeowners or whatever else rather than remain as vacant properties which of course present numerous issues particularly to this office um, as I'm scanning through I'm looking for anything particularly exciting um, there, uh, the issues out at Taylor Point Road seem to be resolved. I've made a couple trips out there, have not note, noted further activity. Um, obviously, the, the issues at 58 Woodbine, we issued a letter. That deadline has not come as yet, so we are still waiting to see um, the homeowner's choice regarding their property. Um, there is one new property that might come before the board, although it's unclear at this point, <clears throat> but they requested a sanitary inspection at 92 Birch Street. This is a new construction home that had quite extensive water and mold issues. The home was remediated, but even after remediation seemed to continue to have issues. Um, I know that the homeowners have already retained an attorney and sought other courses of action. Um, but one of the courses of action advised to them by their attorney was to contact this office and request a sanitary inspection, which I did perform. Um, sanitary inspection is on file within the property record, and I did furnish to the homeowner. Um, the board is not required to take <coughs> action on that inspection. I let the homeowner know that if, if they felt differently and wished the board to take action, that they would simply need to, to make an appointment to come before this board and request action. Um, but at this time, they seem to be pursuing their own legal avenues, and um, if, if it's necessary for this board to get involved, will inform us at a later date. Um, that's about the, the bulk of it. The bulk of it is basically we're seeing our spring ramp up, um, and our spring ramp up will be followed by a summer of a blur of activity. So, okay. Can we just go back to Woodbine <coughs> for a moment? Uh, I'm, I'm reading the second to last paragraph. Uh, you referenced the homeowner has not stopped by the board. Has there been any correspondence whatsoever beyond the letter that was we sent out? We believe that the homeowner, um, via the building department, let us know that the homeowner was in to take some photocopies out of their, their, their file jacket with the building department. Okay. We don't necessarily know what that means, but... No, but we were, we were let know that the, the homeowner yeah. came in and made some photocopies of materials within that file, which are, are ironically the same materials, obviously, in the jacket here at, at uh, the Board of Health. Okay. Took a copy of the building permit. When, okay. when I sent her the letter, I enclosed a copy mm -hmm. of the building permit and the uh, septic permit that was pulled okay. to do the repair. I think she was just verifying that what was on file was what I sent her. It was accurate. Due diligence. Closing remarks on Pima? Um, no, I just, that I've, it's, I'm working on an after action report, which I do after every major event, which just basically hits the highlights and the lowlights, if you would. And when I say lowlights, I don't mean failures of performance. I mean areas that need to be tweaked, changed, or there's some other method of handling something that might be more effective. Uh, unfortunately, with the busyness, I have not gotten very far on that document, but when that document is complete, that will be put before both this board as well as the Board of Selectmen. But there's a lot that goes into it. Um, so I have to ask both the, the Director of Municipal Civil Inspections and all this board, you're going to have to trust my judgment a little bit on this. The, um, the, these, these things I constantly reference, the MEMA meetings I go to as well as the regional me meetings, which I have one tomorrow, um, it outlines what we basically call an all-hazards plan for any community. So when you're preparing an all-hazards plan, this one, of course, happened to be electrical and, and the threat was cold, of course, in nature. Um, but there's certain points that I have to hit with this document, so it's just a little more labor-intensive than, hey, things went well and, and all was good or all wasn't good. There's certain um, touchstones I have to touch uh, because this document, or at least I shouldn't say that, my last document made it all the way to the governor's office because it was a good after-action report on NEMO. Therefore, I take a little bit of pride and effort with this document to make sure that it is effective and accurate. We are used as a midline um, community barometer, and I take a lot of pride in that, that, that um, our plans show a lot of areas of improvement and, and some tweaks to our emergency response plans, both regionally and at a state level, have been not altered, but ha have been taken into consideration based on what we did here. And, and forgive my lack of knowledge on this next question, how, how is it that you came to be doing the report? Like, it, it wouldn't be the, the chief? 
it uh, could it, be, but it, it depends on each town has its own structure. Um, in general, uh, in a great deal of communities, it is the agent and or health director. It could be an emergency management director, depending on the community and depending on their involvement in regionalization of emergency response plans. In Pembroke, I think it was just a matter of, uh, and again, forgive me if I step out line, but the, the chiefs and I have just come to an agreement on certain people do certain things. Um, Chief Hill handles uh, Pima. Um, he, he handles the filing of all reimbursements forms and everything else to the feds. Um, he handles the annual grant application. Um, Chief Wall handles the actual, um, if you would, he acts as the incident commander as these events unfold, the decision maker, deployment of staff, um, gathering of resources with the exception of the fire department, of course. So I think that only my familiarity with the, if you would, paper plan or the plan as it's written out with its hazards and components um, lends itself to myself writing this document because I'm more familiar with that aspect. The, the contractors that actually write this document on behalf of the town actually do work directly with the boards of health. You have not had the pleasure of meeting Tobias yet. You will. He's a wonderful gentleman. Um, but the state provides us funding which in turn pays for these contractors to actually help us write the all hazards plans that actually help us write the grants to get money from the state and the feds. They actually put together these tabletop exercises we go to that I hope the board can go to in June and you'll see kind of some of this in action. Um, so again, it's only because I work with them so I'm more familiar with these specific areas so I know kind of if you would the areas to touch. Um, so I don't think it's a, a matter of anyone said you do it. I think it's a matter of familiarity with the document and familiarity with the points um, that need to be highlighted within this document that lend itself to being written by me. Is this a document that gets signed off on by? It was. The... It was in Nemo. Yes, it went to the, to the director of municipal inspections. But in that capacity, he was actually, of course, acting as town administrator, and it was signed off by him before it was released to the public. And I believe, Mr. Thorne, you did ask the the selectmen to review that document before it was released mm -hmm. as well. Correct. So it needs to be signed off by yes. the selectmen. Yes. Not by the Board of Health. Um, I think it's I, uh, in, in practice and in, in the way that the CDC and, and the DPH is going, I think the Board of Health should start reviewing this document and understanding its components. Is it required to, to, to answer yeah. your question directly? No. Is it a document that as board members you want to become familiar with um, from, from your seats as board members? Absolutely, because public health plays a large role and if, if the state and the CDC have their way, will play a larger role in emergency response in the future. So was the document complete? No, not even okay. close. Okay. Not even close. There's a lot of, I have to go back and, and, and connect it, connect the dots to a lot of certain specific hazards, certain specific responsibilities, and everything else. So it, it takes me a while to make so sure you're, that... you're yeah. working on it. Okay. I'm, Nemo, the Nemo document, Ed, I want to correct my, my memory, but I think it took me six months before I had that one to the point where I wanted it. And this was only a six-page document, but there's certain things you really want to tie in. So it does take me a little bit of time to do that. Okay. So Especially this... when you're running around doing everything else, forgive me. Okay. Chasing roosters All right. and such. Well, thank you for educating me on, on the report. And, and I, and I'm not speaking for the entire board, but I would like to see the, the board Absolutely. take a more active role with Pima, which is something we'll probably discuss after the elections. But Certainly. thank you. Any comments? Mr. No, my own, uh, I remember in, in telling you what a wonderful job that they did do when I was there to see it. Uh, the only question I have is <clears throat> one of the issues that was raised or asked about was what what do they do if we lose power and we have no phones and we do have the actual uh, shelter mm -hmm. how do we get the message out to the people so um, my going forward obviously I knew there was a shelter in place but maybe you know what what actually is the message if we're all out of power sure. nobody knows what to do has that been addressed in that sense? Because well, we have a mix in this town. Of Only to a degree, because here's yeah. the, the reality, as you put out, um, and I, I think it's easy, it's always easy in 2020 hindsight to say, well, you should have this and you should have that. Right. I don't think there's a person around that could have predicted what happened during this event, the level of catastrophic damage um, to the grid, but on top of that, that, that Verizon themselves did not know that a tree had fallen on the lines to their building, they did not realize their hub building had been taken out of service, which is why people were having so many problems with Verizon. 
So the, the problem is multi-phone. Now, I personally use Verizon. I did not lose Verizon cell service throughout the event. I know that um, even seniors are urged to get some sort of an emergency backup cell phone so that when pe you know, power is down and, and te therefore telephone lines are down, that they still have a means of communication. And I know that both um, of the chiefs, and, and Ed, correct me if I'm wrong, are, are seeking some funding to move forward to, to install, once again, our own reverse 911 system. Um, I believe via grant application, but I think there would be some town funding involved in that. It's not cheap. It's, it is ten grand. We cannot rely on the sheriff's department to do that for us anymore. Most of the surrounding communities have purchased their own program, such as Halifax and Duxbury. I'm pretty sure Norwell owns their own program. So that, that was one of the steps that were taken of, so if we lose landlines, we can create a database that will include cell phones and do a reverse 911 to those. The other thing that we found wildly successful, <clears throat> and even with seniors, believe it or not, more and more seniors are using Facebook and social media, if only to keep in touch with grandkids and see photos and whatnot. But I also found that via social media, when the town of Pembroke government posted a post to Facebook or something else, that post, within a half an hour, already had over 200 shares almost every time, which means that message was getting saturated, and the hope is, of course, that if people know they have an isolated senior near them, that they would check on them, and we always urge that in all of our emergency messages that go out. Is any response foolproof? Absolutely not. When you lose power, you lose phones, and you lose everything else, there is no method of communication that is 100% foolproof to every home in Pembroke. But the reverse 911, I think, will fill a lot of the gaps, and I think social media and wireless communication are going to fill some of the other gaps. Good. Okay. Just, you know. best, best laid plans of mice and men, I believe they say. So we, we've come up with the best laid plans we can. But that was one thing we did not anticipate is Verizon losing a major hub. Um, and they didn't even know that was the surprising part until we told them. I, I heard a, a $10,000 figure. Is that a one-time cost? Or is that you know, we, you know, we just briefly explored that. Um, you know, right now we're looking at a couple of things. You know, as with every major event, we find out something that we weren't either prepared for or um, didn't anticipate having to use. Um, and, and believe it or not, you know, um, we have generators and all of our facilities that we use except for Town Hall. And so, you know, that's, uh, that's something for the fall town meeting for us, um, you know, to make sure that, uh, you know, we have power in this building, of all buildings. But, you know, we saw higher priorities at the library, at the Council on Aging, police and fire departments, and the housing authorities, and unknown DPW. Yeah. Because one of the things we found out in Nemo was that they lost power and the fuel facility was down. And so, fortunately, Matthew's Electric came to the rescue and came in in the middle of the night and restored power. Um, that was the only place that had gasoline available because none of the private contractors could use our facility because we don't pay taxes. And, you know, we're trying to get special legislation to allow communities to be able to sell gasoline to the private contractors because for four hours in the middle of Nemo, we didn't plow one street. That creates problems. But so, the, 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 so putting a, uh, an upgraded generator at the DPW was our number one uh, priority that year. But 911 is never a one-time cost. There are additional startup costs, but there are an yeah. annual, which is why it was dropped when it was first shifted from the state to the town. There will be an annual line item cost associated with maintaining the system. It, I mean, clearly, emergency management, I mean, it's, it's a critical component for the entire town. And for those that are, it's near and dear to, I mean, it, it's a moving target. And, and as you said, no, no two emergencies, even two snowstorms, are just not alike in the severity and the length. And it, 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 it's a learning process. So, you know, we're going to get a, a number from the DPW tonight as to what the cleanup is going to be for various facilities, including the Herring Run, because right now 
we won't be able to have the fish fry there because of the 19 trees that are down. 19? 19. The back part is in terrible right. shape. It's like a war zone back there. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Lisa. Just the last thing on the update, the and I don't know if you wanted to speak on that, if I'm our DMI director, the Septic Betterman Program, the resignation of Chris Frazier. Yes, we do not have anyone to administer our Septic Betterman Program at this time. I delicately uh, state advises not having that house within the Board of Health that all these projects should be looked at for their merit only, not associated with their price tag. So I know we had someone in mind, but unfortunately that employee has also shifted their work responsibility. So Ed, at this point, we're still up in the air. Yeah, I know. I talked to Chris about that. And she's closing out two files and uh, we'll be giving you all that information that she has at the fire department and uh, we'll be making a management decision about who will be handling that. She's remaining with the town, is that correct? Yes, just, okay. just, just, just not this that. aspect. She just gave that up. Okay, gotcha. Do you think you'll have someone in mind by next? Well, I mean, I'm undergoing uh, some personnel changes of our own in, in my office, so uh, you know, that you're working on it. Um, yeah, that, it's, it compounded the situation that we have right there's, now. There's so. many personnel shifts okay. within Town Hall at this point that uh, we might not have an answer. The, the, the short answer is no, we probably will not have an answer for the board in two weeks. Perhaps in four weeks we might. Okay. Sheila, could you make sure that just pokes on the agenda? Not our next meeting, but for the meeting after that, so four, four weeks. Thank you. Yep. The meeting out. Uh, the uh, May uh, betterment uh, resignation. Yeah, the I'll, May I'll have a. Uh, you can accept the resignation. Well, I mean, oh, there's, there's no choice. There's no. There's no choice. choice. The resignation is just like the FYI. Yeah. 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 Right. You can't Point say no. You can't. And, and I'll. Uh, and I, hopefully in a month I'll have uh, a plan for you guys. Okay. Mm -hmm. And just a quick. I, I may have missed that. Who, who or what organization did you say made the recommendation that those in the Board of Health... We received, originally the Town of Pembroke received funding from the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. This was a, a law written to loan towns money to start the septic better yep. program. Now Pembroke has since paid back its loan to the state and if you would, is working with Pembroke's own money, which means as people pay off septics, that money has been put aside um, to continue to loan out from Pembroke revenue. Um, the problem being that if the, the amounts being paid off don't come in, that, that kitty, if you would, that pot of money will remain on the smaller side. As more get paid off, that kitty gets larger. But it was recommended to us back, I want to say 15 years ago when this program started, that while it's not illegal for it to be administered out of the Board of Health, they gave great caution that that could perhaps muddy the waters because the Board of Health would be seeing not only the merits or the safety of the septic system, but rather the cost associated with it. And they didn't feel that the cost of the project should influence whether or not the board approves it or not. For example, some septic systems that are do a better job of protecting the environment in environmental safety areas can be much more expensive. I think the idea was they didn't want the boards giving variances or perhaps more variances than are appropriate as a cost-saving measure. They want the rules <laughs> adhered to a maximum feasible compliance, not maximum feasible compliance with a price tag associated with it. I think that that just keeps everyone, if you would, just in a little bit better standing that decisions to made to give variances or, or extra permissions is not done so with a monetary thought in mind. That was 15 years ago that that recommendation yes. was made. And again, and, and, not and, a law, but I think, yep. you know, for, from a standpoint of... Uh, uh, my personal standpoint would be I think it's better that way, that to, ju to judge a project on its merits rather than on its, its cost or price tag. Um, I think when you introduce money into it, it, it makes one consider things other than environmental protection and human safety, and that's not really what we're supposed to be here for. Do you concur with those comments, Mr. Yeah, I think originally when the program started, the Old Colony Planning Council was the one that administered the program. Yes, yeah, so we didn't see any of the financials right, so other than the total amount. So it's been some time that we took it in-house yes. and we'll probably keep it in-house and uh, like I said, um, I'll wait for the dust to settle on a couple of personnel issues and like I said, I probably will have something available. Okay. 
in a month. Good. Thank you. Thank you for the thoughts. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's 5.50 now. We're running a couple of minutes behind. Is that you, Shane? Come on in. And you can come in through the door, Mr. McGlone. All right, she went to the building. You can do that too. Um, wait a minute. Sorry. Do engineers always take a long way around? <laughs> the front. Did you go there? I did, but there's no places in common. It doesn't matter. <laughs> oh, yeah, this is it. How, how you doing? doing? Thanks for coming in. Yeah, no problem. Great to see you guys. Hi. I'm Matt. How are you? Hey, Matt. Shane McClellan. Nice, nice to meet you. You too. So Shane, Shane is our, our third speaker for our Aid to Educate program, and as I promised Shane when I reached out to you, got you, got, you got eight minutes, so right. it's real, you know, I, I told you over the phone, I don't want to dictate what you'd like to talk about. Uh, you, we've got a, a third member that's not present tonight, but your your presence here tonight is just as important, and, and thanks for coming in. No and I'm going to turn the turn the floor, right, turn box. the clock on. and <laughs> You've been given a soapbox. You've know? been given free reign to... What would you like every board uh, of health in, in the southeast region to know? I uh, thank you for inviting me here tonight. And um, so I'm Shane McLone. I uh, do engineering or Title Five septic systems here in Pembroke. Um, I'm <coughs> third generation here in Pembroke, doing the same thing. My grandfather Bob McGlone was an engineer forever. He was actually on the board of health back in the '60s for a little while. Um, so we've been around for a little while. We've seen it all. And uh, the thing that I really wanted to talk about, and I'm glad that I heard you guys speaking about this before I came on, was the uh, loan program. And just sort of from my perspective, the benefits that I've seen with my clients. Um, now, it used to be administered by uh, South Shore Housing or Old Connolly Planning, <coughs> and um, that, that seemed to work well. Um, and then we brought it on, the town took care of it, and also worked equally as well. Um, the benefit really is that if you have a failed septic system and you need to get it fixed and you don't have the means to do it, the town is there to help out the constituents. And for the most part, it's older people on fixed incomes who have been around for a long time and their septic's failing and they just want to get it fixed. Um, there have been um, many times that we've utilized that program, like I said, both with South Shore Housing and with the town. And the process is generally the same every time. You know, after I get in and do the engineering, we take the plan and distribute it to, you know, three or four or five installers because we need three prices to bring to the, to the town. The, um, in general, believe it or not, it's hard to get three or four good guys in any one town. You know, there's there's a long list that we have of installers that work here, and for the most part, they're not as surgical as backyard guys. You know, there's a lot of large companies that have got big equipment, and they do residential subdivisions or commercial work, and they show up, you know, after all the trees have been cut off the site, with a big machine, they do their thing, and they leave, and a landscaping company comes in behind them. The guys that do the work around here are much more surgical. You have to be in and out of somebody's backyard. You have to leave it the way you found it, or better. And um, so the, the list of, of good, competent, and experienced installers is really significantly smaller than, than we might think. So I take care of getting prices from, you know, a number of installers, if the homeowners have somebody they had in mind, you know, of course we do whatever they want. Uh, once we determine that they have an installer that they like, you know, the paperwork is sent off to the town hall and um, generally the process in the past has taken really not that much time. Two weeks, three weeks later, they're, they're good to go and they've got a check and they're moving forward. And um, Often, because there's a little bit of a lag in the time from when they sign up and the time that they get money, sometimes people will, you know, front the engineering costs up front. They will pay for the engineering costs, and then they have the ability to get the money back afterwards as part of the whole loan program. So even though they may have to pick some money out of their pocket initially, they have the ability to get it back if they choose to. And uh, a lot of times that helps things move along and expeditiously because... Um, 
you know, the people are freaking out. They're backed up into their house or it's, you know, out on the lawn and the neighbors are complaining or they've got a, a nice letter from the health agent suggesting to move in that direction. So um, my two cents are that I, I think that the program has been enormously successful. Now, I'm not running the show from the side that you guys are at, you know, the appropriating the funds and the administrative uh, aspects of, of taking care of the loan process. Um, so I really can't speak to how that gets, at least when I was spoke about it earlier today and that, you know, there's town meeting, you have to get funds appropriated. Um, if, if there was a scenario where it was just too difficult to work it out in house, you know, they, there has been a changing of the guard over there at South Shore Housing. So there's a younger guy that's in there that he's sort of, now the Jane, Jane Lanier, who was there before, she was very good. Uh, this new kid, um, Sean, is even better. And so I deal with that organization in other towns. And so I get to see the difference between the town taking care of it themselves and the um, town farming that out to a different organization. And I did have one client this past uh, fall, and she actually was able to get a loan through a state agency. And she gave the information to me in terms of if I needed to have somebody else follow through with that in the future. And so if somebody wanted to reach out to me, I could hook you up with that information in terms of how to get it. So there's, there's other avenues that can be taken in order to, to appropriate funds to take care of these things. But uh, the bottom line that I just wanted to bring across was that it has been enormously successful and helpful, not only to the local um, population, but also obviously to the environment, because that's what we're, what we're trying to do in the first place. I have a question. Oh, I have a question for you. Uh, as an engineer, and I don't, I don't want to put words in your mouth, and, and you didn't say that there's a shrinking pool of septic installers, but when, no. I, when you're having a discussion with a homeowner and they say, what do you think? Who do, who, who do I use? Do you have three or four guys that you like to rotate, or are there actually criteria on, on any given septic project that you say, you know what, I think we need to call X? How, how does yeah, that... It definitely... Um can go both ways. If if I'm in any given in community, first of all, the, the guys that work there, I've, I'm going to start out by picking from. One of my best guys, Chris Phillips, he's a Duxbury guy, he wouldn't even know how to find Hanover. Okay, so because the good guys, they have enough work to stay right in their little area. So um, I will help a homeowner by saying, you know, often they've got the list and I'll say yes, 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 and I'll, I will take care of it in order to help move the process along. I'll distribute the plans to different installers. I'll give the names and the contact information to my clients so they can work it out amongst themselves. I'll offer my services to review the proposals after they're done, make sure that everyone's comparing apples and apples, and, and for the most part, um, it's worked out pretty well in that respect. Do you find that a, a homeowner may get three, or let's say two or three bids, and then they're looking at them, and they're not necessarily able to compare apples to apples. They reach back out to you and say, "You know what? I got fifteen thousand. I got sixteen. Yeah. Help me out I got here." Twenty-five, right? And twenty. Well, that, that's that's definitely part of the service that I provide. So I um, try to make sure that my jobs go as smoothly as possible from the beginning to end, because once I give one of my clients a, uh, a price for the job, I really have to stick with that. So I want my I want my installers, whoever's working for me at the time, to do the best job that they can do because I want to make sure that it goes as smoothly as possible so I can be moving on to the next job, not having to worry about details. Okay. You know, maybe a new guy from out of town that, if someone says, oh, I've got this guy from, you know, Samoset that wants to come on here. Well, if he doesn't have work where he is, you don't want him here. That's generally, unless it's your brother or your, you know, some family member. For the most part, good installers can stay right where they are. It's expensive to move this stuff around. The equipment's very big and, sure. you know, 
in our groups. Okay. Mr. Newman, do you have any questions for? No, but he sure has. He should be in radio. <laughs> Pretty. It's yeah, what's you like to clear and you know it's uh, relaxing. So I'm you know <laughs> learning as I go, but uh, well, you know, you yeah, no, not at all. Uh, There's a reason why probably 50 to 65 percent of the septic designs done in the town of Pembroke are done by that gentleman sitting across. Yeah, the I I can see why. And he, and he won't brag about himself, but I'll brag a little bit. There's a reason for that. And, and this is true of installers as well as engineers. The one thing you cannot buy back, and there is no substitution for, is your reputation. And when your reputation precedes you as being one of the best, um, that will generate work. And I don't think Mr. McGlone has to travel more than three towns for work, if I'm not mistaken, maybe four at well, the outside. That's, essentially, that's what the other guys are doing, too. I, yep. I won't work in West Bridgewater, you know, because it's just, I work in the towns that I work in. They all touch each other. I, if, if an installer calls me up and says, hey, I need you out of the job, I need to be able to be there mm -hmm. to be able to answer any questions. And if there's a job you know, across the state or five towns away, I'm not serving my clients well by taking that job. Sure. Yeah. And, and I, would, I would echo the comments of our health agent. Um, Any time that I've had to reach out to you, you've actually sat down with my son, a graduating engineer, and so you've, you've definitely been I'm available. Uh, my, I'd like to thank you for coming this evening, but just one kind of closing question. You were sitting out there maybe hearing a little bit about the Betterment program. Had that not been on the agenda tonight, even as a brief discussion, no, that was how my, were you going to occupy? That was my plan. Oh, it was? You were going to talk about the Betterment? Yeah, okay. it was, because um, I get asked about it very frequently. Okay. So it's nice if I know what's going on, so I can tell my clients what's going okay. on. Well, thanks for taking time away from the fam. No problem. And, and coming to the board. We appreciate it. Right, okay. Mr. Nice Newman? to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. I hope right. everything works you. out. Yeah, That's thanks. great. It will. Enjoy thanks, it. Shane. Take care. Thank you, Shane. Bye-bye. I'm going to go up this door. Right? Uh, yes. <laughs> Try something new. Uh, our 6 o'clock is here, I believe. Our uh, 6 o'clock? Is here. Is here? Yes. 6 o'clock? We'll bring him in. Did we ever get the final, the, the meter plans? From no, he, he oh, has them in hand. Okay, he got it. it. The variance he's Those asking is, is very cookie cutter and standard. Um, uh, I think we're good, Mr. Thorne, if you would like to excuse yourself. Thank you. Thanks, thanks for coming, and we'll, we'll see you in two weeks. You got it. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks, Ed. Mr. Reardon, right. come calling on in. Sit down. In the interest of just so helping much. Mr. Reardon, because he oh. and I have kicked this can around for quite a bit of time, but just, just to help expedite. Long story short, he and I kind of pulled out his plans, we pulled out his septic, we pulled apart his house, we did a lot of measuring and drawing, and I asked him one very specific question, and, and that was to bring in a scaled drawing of his intention to make a very long story short. He owns a very nice piece of property on Furnace Pond, on Cranberry Road. He does not have a lot of geographical real estate. Um, he does have a need for his expanding family very much for an additional bedroom. His septic will handle the capacity of the additional bedroom. Um, his problem at this point, long story short, is he has a finished basement, which is not appropriate living space, not appropriate bedroom space, and he needs to add a bedroom above grade for his growing family. And his house layout is such that he has pretty much one space to go out where he can get an appropriate hallway that is of the required width of 36 inches or greater by building code to put this room. The problem is the one space um, for him to go with this room, unfortunately, is next to his septic tank. It is not a large encroachment. Our requirement is to be 10 feet removed from the septic tank. But unfortunately, again, to maintain that hallway at an appropriate space in his house, in other words, not having to walk through another room, um, will encroach. We determined by two feet. We think we, we, it's going to be about um, eight feet. It's less than two feet, but right. if, you know, once it's dug out and you know, you I would say two feet just to be safe. Be we were we were we were scaling it around, and we were saying that the safe variance request would be to request a variance from the required setback of ten feet from the septic feet um, tank, front to eight feet. Um, I explained to him the, the dangers of digging around a septic tank and he's going to have to be careful and everything else. I believe you decided that this bedroom is going to sit on footings? I haven't decided. Okay. Um, it, it doesn't really matter, but we, we had talked about that as well. Um, but unfortunately, given his home's layout without really doing a lot of construction and reconfiguring his home, he doesn't have a good place to get access to this new room without encroaching a little bit. And you have your scale drawing to show the board? Yeah. So basically, it's I appreciate the preliminary... Uh, 
Are you going to be doing the work yourself? No. Okay. I mean, is, is that you, Stone uh, Yeah, I'm, I'm a contractor for okay. uh, landscape. So, look, no, you made reference, I'm just trying to make sure that I'm clear on this, this room that you want to build that may or may not be on footings or you may dig. Is this a, a bedroom? Yes. yes. An additional bedroom. So, a fourth bedroom? No. no. There is no, the bedroom downstairs has been eliminated into an office and open space, and it's not appropriate as a bedroom Those being below grade. Okay. Now, people do this all the time, and we don't stop them from doing it, but, but below grade bedrooms are not appropriate. They're not to the building code standard. He does have a three bedroom septic. He understands that when this project okay. is complete, he owns a three bedroom home, no more, um, but he needs that additional bedroom above grade. Okay. So we're, we're taking away the so-called basement bedroom. Which should not be there in the first place, and we're, correct. And this new addition will be a third, a real third bedroom. Exactly. Okay, An good. Appropriate third Take bedroom. it away. So here we go. Um, is this for us? A copy? Is yeah, this, okay. I got two. Okay. Long, Thanks. Quick peek. So this is a new work along the front of the house here, porch, extending. New? Yes. Okay. Extending this bedroom to make a hallway, and this would be the, the new addition off the side here. Okay. So the dark black lines existing, this is the new work. I need to make a hallway through here, which will, I have a bathroom door right here, and so basically I don't have to take this wall down, or, and it will bring the new hallway into the new bedroom. But if I shift it out more, I can't line the hallway up right to get the 10 feet. Right now, it's just about 9. Okay. Depending on when you excavate and how it lays out, it could be, you know, 8 foot, 9 inches, you know. So it's definitely not, it's between 8 and 9 feet. So this is the tank here, the leaching fields out here. So the new work would just be this existing bedrooms here moving the wall in to make a hallway and then this my kitchen and my bathroom don't get affected at all where's your entrance now to the to get in the house uh there's one here at the back deck right here so you can walk onto the deck and in mm -hmm. and there's one door right here okay where this port which will move and yeah so i don't have to so this bedroom will get extended off the front to make room for this hallway which is now in this bedroom. Got it. Okay. And then I get a straight shot I can, on this hallway and get to my bathroom, my existing bedroom, and my new bedroom. And then this is just getting extended out six feet to, you know, make up for the. 40. In the in the current layout, the the bedroom opens into the bathroom, correct? Correct. So just so that the board understands, that's why that hallway needs to be there. Otherwise, that bathroom would remain opening to a bedroom. That's why the hallway needs to be there so that both bedrooms have access to the bathroom without traversing in those rooms, which would also be a code violation. You're not supposed to have any pass-through rooms be bedrooms. Again, not we're going to haul people in their beds out of their rooms. That's not what we do, but it, it would still be a code violation. You're supposed to have free and clear access to each and every room without having to pass through other rooms. So by doing this shift, he would he would be code compliant. And of course, anyone in a, in a good building project should want their home to be com code compliant when they're complete. Code compliant by... <coughs> by building code. Building code, not health. Correct. Uh, code. Health code has nothing health to has do nothing, that. But thing. he's explaining this to us because yep. it involves a septic. Right. For he's trying to do everything right, right and it, yeah. there's a lot of moving parts, yeah. Exactly. Another moving parts case, but... In order to comply with yeah. building code, he is going to have to encroach on, on his septic tank. There really isn't a lot of other ways to do it. And he's working with you on that, and yes. it, by this it would be about, he's going to ask for eight it's two feet, feet or less. Two, yep. feet, two feet or less, so he's going to ask for eight. And if to it be comes, safe. If, if it comes by ten, he's still Correct. within the rights. I think that's a good idea. And I pull the tape out and it's squared. It's just it's nine feet, but I don't want to, it to shift in, the, you know, eight feet. 11 inches, you know what I mean? It's n nowhere near 8, but the 8 feet... He's being really safe. Different. He's being smart, and he's making sure that he is, he is, if anything, erring on the side of caution. What's the determinant if the new bedroom is going to, if you're going to put it on concrete, or are you going to go down? Um, day? Well... It's cost. It's just cost? You well, it's, it's between floor. trying to get it, the floor insulated, because it's the way that... If I put it on tubes then the way the f existing floor comes off of the house 
then I'm not going to really be able to get any crawl space access under there okay. the sauna tubes. Okay. So I could do it, I could crawl under and insulate it that way. Um, I just haven't really seen how much room I have. Do I have a foot? Yeah. Do, is it only eight inches to get under there? So I, I might need to do a, a pour or put it on a block foundation so that I can put a crawl space. Blocks are put in, yeah. yeah. So from our end, Mr. Chairman, since he's here explaining this, I mean, basically this is to <coughs> compliance with, you know, building codes. Do we need to do anything in regards to this? Well, I have a question. Uh, that's a good question. I have a question for the health aid. Yep. To, to make it, there's no formal motion in any of the paperwork. Do you need, are you waiting the, the for... Formal, the formal motion would be to allow a variance at 38 Cranberry Road from the required setback for new construction of 10 feet from a septic tank to allow a variance down to 8, eight feet, feet for new construction from a septic tank. I understand that. My, oh, okay. My, my, my don't be sorry. Mm -hmm. My question is, do you need anything more official? Do we need anything more official from Mr. Reardon? Because I'm, I'm used no. to, in, in previous history on the board, the motion is always in writing somewhere, and I didn't know if this is a preliminary. No, he is seeking a building permit, so a simple motion made and approved by the board will allow me to sign off on his building permit to move forward. The engineering and the issuing of the building permit is, is the condition of the building department. The only thing he's looking off for from this office was a sign off from me that I couldn't grant because I knew his project wasn't fully compliant with just a simple vote of this board. I can now issue a sign off on his building permit and he will. So it's basically it. housekeeping so that he came before Correct. us and it allows him to, you know. Correct. Coach, so uh, house, I wouldn't call it housekeeping. Well, but no, but it, it's something that should be considered, but it is a pretty, <laughs> as variances go, yes, it's one of the re routine variances we yeah. give, particularly with the pond properties because of the, the tight conformity of the lots. In order to do many projects, these kinds of variances are required uh, to allow homeowners to, uh, you know, fulfill their, their, their building desires and their home needs. If granted the motion, Mr. Reed, when are you going to start this? Uh, hopefully soon. Um, June, you know, I'm still trying to get pricing in. You know, I haven't done too much before I figured out if I can do work. So okay. I would like, to, right now we have my daughter, um, she's 11 months yesterday. So she's in our bedroom, which is a you know, fairly good size room, but, uh, you know, it's can't do that forever. So, um, and then this is my son's bedroom. So we're trying to do it this summer, where you know my wife and the kids can go to a parent for a few weeks and get the work. Yeah. The work. Sure. Okay. Um, pretty much that we've looked in to move in to you know it's just we love the house and the property and it's uh, yeah, same Pembroke. Yeah, and uh, there's not a lot of stuff for sale right now. And you can't have any more kids though. Oh, no. Well, that's <laughs> I, I'm fine with two and. Uh, <laughs> Just going from one kid to two kids, it's like, it's a lot of work. Yes. <laughs> it is, it is. It's okay. I'm going to ask, would anyone like to make a motion? Well, I'd, I'd like to make a motion, but um, in the, in the um, figuring out exactly how we should word this, because it's, it's a simple, what he's asking for is simple, but do we, uh, professionally, how should it be worded in that sense? In order to help them out. Do sure. We just in this situation, I would say that, that if I were a sitting board member, I'd phrase it something like this: uh, Move to grant the variance as requested at 38 Cranberry Road for relief of the setback requirements of 10 feet for new construction to a septic tank, and allow a variance to 8 feet, which is what he's requesting. And you can say, "I would so move as you presented." That's totally appropriate emotion. Yeah, no, that's fine. Uh, okay, that's why I asked. So, nope. uh, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion to grant the variance as requested for relief, for relief from 10 feet to 8 feet for the property at, um, uh, what's the address? 38 Cranberry Road. Um, to the homeowner. Is that your motion? Yes. I'll second your motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Congratulations, Thank Mr. Reardon. <laughs> Mr. Reardon, do you have your building permit with you? Aye. Excellent, sir. 
If you have any other questions or need any other assistance, do not hesitate to reach out to me, and I'd be happy to help you with it, okay? Thank you. You're, very You're welcome. welcome. I appreciate it. We'll, we'll do what we can. While not an engineering diagram, I, I appreciate, uh, I'm not making sport of you, I appreciate the, the drawing in it and help add a lot of clarity yeah. to the project as you're explaining it. So thank you for doing that. And um, do you need, do you have a copy of this, Sheila? No. You do? No. Okay. So. But I can make it as he's going out the door. Okay. No, no. He, okay. I just noted your variance on there. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Good luck. So, Thank you. Now on to. You're on to getting other signatures. We are no longer your issue. Awesome. Thank you very much for your help. Good luck. Have, have, have a great night. Thanks. Good luck. Thank you. Okay, 6.15, we'll head right along. The last item on the agenda is Old Business, the Board of Health Initiatives. We rescheduled our last meeting of two weeks ago, but prior to that, I had Sheila distribute um, the Board of Health Future Initiatives to both you and Ms. McSweeney. Um, I asked you guys to take a look at it, come up with some level of prioritization, um, whatever system or method that you chose to do, probably very different from mine. I actually did a lettering system. Um, I'm certainly... I was going to ask you about that, so... Uh, go ahead. You can uh, explain that and then maybe we'll... Yeah. What I did was, so there were five categories that I had asked our health agent to come up with some initiatives and we've had them floating around the office for quite a while. Uh, septic regulation oversight, public health and safety, public sanitation, emergency preparation, of which I am on a personal note hoping that the board does get a little more involved in um, after our coming elections, and finally animal inspection services. Thanks, Sheila. So those are our five categories, Mr. Newman, and then we have yeah. some little things to tackle under Excuse each me, one of them. Fine. Could you go over, it did truncate some of your lettering when I made the copy. Yeah. Some of your lettering didn't come across. I see, so I, you, that, okay, all right. Please, uh, so sure. that's why I, I'll have you explain because you, they listed one one to five and then you have, and then underneath the A, B, and C. Yeah. But you lettered them as A through. Fair uh, enough. So. so the one to five was simply the categories yes. in which we were looking for things that the board can work under. They weren't, I want to be clear, they were not prioritized. Absolutely. One is being one, two is being yeah. two. It was just five items. Yeah. Yeah. So I took, there's a total of three, six, eight, ten, twelve. Twelve yeah. items. And then I, I lettered them as what I thought, maybe not necessarily most important, but what I'd like to see the board tackle. I am only one of three. You know, I, I, I don't drive this process. So under Public sanitation, which is the third mm -hmm. category. Sure. A and B. I put B because this is something that we had talked about as a board prior to you coming aboard. I put that as letter A, our first. Yeah. So our plastic bags. Yeah, plastic right. bags. Yeah. And if it pleases the rest of the board, I have started this process actually speaking with Sabrina Chilcott about how best to go about forming a subcommittee. I'd like to, if it's okay with you, continue to own that process and I'd like to spend some time with Ms. Chilcott and then bring it back to the board and present it to the board. Excellent. Um, but that was what I had as my, as the first one. Sure. You should, you could certainly get a copy of this too if you would like. Uh, for B, under number one, and you can look at mine if, if the letters weren't clear. No, I'll follow you as you go. Okay. I, you I don't know if you want to go through the whole well, item in front of the cameras, but under septic regulation, I have B as the second category, second item to look at. Yeah. C, right down here, Mr. Newman. Down here. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And what I did for the fourth item under public health I believe C was under uh, the very last item on the page Sheila thank you you're welcome what I had done for D under public health and safety which is the first item A so what I did is I actually thought it maybe we should separate A it says identify future needs 
that the board can anticipate filling for a growing population within the next 10 years. See that? Yep. Next, it says determine what services, if any, could be eliminated. Yeah. And, and I thought about separating those two. So for D, the fourth item that I'm suggesting, I had determine what services, if any, could be eliminated. So I split that into two. E, which is letter B, under public health and safety. Yeah. Under emergency preparation, letter A, I put F. That's okay. Going back up to septic regulation oversight at the top. Item number A, I put G. Under public health and safety, C, the third item, I put H. This is helping you, Sheila? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Under emergency preparation, item B, I put I. Now, there were two items that the board has looked at probably within the last six months, Mr. Newman. Under item number one, septic regulation, C, C. review and consider modification yep. of Pembroke's. So we've, we've looked at that. I think the board, as it's currently constituted, I think we should take a look at it and, and can maybe do a better job with that. So that's one. I kind of put an asterisk on that one. And also on the fifth category, animal inspection services, the first bullet, review and update the town's livestock rules and regulations. We've done that to a degree. So those two items, I think, are very important. And, and I think the board, I would never say that we failed miserably, but I think the board could do a better job with those. But I don't think, I think it's a little too early to look at them right away. So I kind of put those two together to table for the future. Okay. Um, okay. So that still leaves you with, um, from what I see, is... Uh, uh, I'll, I think I've got uh, under public sanitation. What do you a, a yeah, and I also under public health and safety, the first part of A, where it says identify future needs that the board can anticipate. I put those two together. I gave them the letter L. Okay. So I thought they were both. So I want to be clear here. I, I'm not driving the bus. Number one and number two. I could see where somebody might say, well, logically, that's very confusing, Mr. Fine. You were kind of all over the map. What I thought I would like to do is rather than tackling, just take one category, for instance, septic regulation oversight, and just tackling everything under there, I wanted to mix it up. I thought it would be healthy for the board so that we have a variety of topics that are coming before the board, not just staying in one particular category. But I could see where perhaps you or Ms. McSweeney wanted to make an alternative argument. So that's kind of that was my methodology in going through this list. I don't know what you did. Uh, well, my thoughts on it were that uh, first, um, obviously you work with the health agent and you discuss issues, and that's where this came from, correct? She has certain things. You have been on the board. You're the acting chairman, so you work towards it. I treat it as almost like a... If you look at it on the surface, I would think of it almost like a capital plan that most boards would have. In other words, despite clear issues here, I don't believe you can tackle and take a whole group on at once because there's, there's too many things that tie into it. And two, we would all probably have different opinions on what we would prioritize. But you as chairman, if you were to say, you know, and... I would probably, if you really felt strongly, I would probably, you know, like to see some things done. So I, if that's what we decided to tackle as a group, I would be in favor of that. Myself, having discussed, you know, and looked at these issues and seen firsthand, like, number one that popped out to me would be the emergency preparation. Because after what we went through, you know, that caught my attention. So I felt strongly about that. Uh, after seeing the shelter being involved and seeing what went along with it. But there are also all these issues are important. So uh, I think if we could put the right amount 
decide what to start with, I think we could, you know, get something done. But I do differ in my opinion as far as, like you said, uh, you know, it's different than what the way you figured it out. But uh, I would like to see some of these issues tackled. Okay. Um, I don't really have... <laughs> A, a mandate per se. I, I'm yeah. not married to the order. No. I, I do want to kind of feel strongly about getting the subcommittee going for the banning of plastic bags. I've got a sense of that, so and mm -hmm. it is something I would actually like to see that myself. So uh, if you um, need approval and or a motion, I'd be happy to. I don't think, I don't we, think you would. But I don't I think, think I need issue. a motion. I I'd like to see you come back and tell me what what you might come up with, because I know it's a tremendous issue uh, around, a lot. matter of fact, where I go shopping now, uh, at Market Basket in Plymouth, you, there are none. No plastic bags. There are none. Okay. So you have to have either boxes or uh, use your own bags, So and uh, they are becoming a huge problem in the environment, so I'd, I'd love to see you come back and let us know about that. Okay, so what will, I will present at our next meeting, some information about the subcommittee. Good. What I'm going to ask you to do in the rest of this list, because I, I, I do want to come up with some type of order, because we've tried this in the past with mixed results, so I, I want to see if, if we can get something a little more concrete. So I'm going to ask that between now and the next meeting, if you could rank these, what you would like to see, I will look at them and I will have an order that we're going to go on for our next meeting because it sounds like that maybe you didn't do it or maybe you No, I didn't. I looked at them all, but I didn't um, I just felt okay. It was my feeling that there's so many here there are. that we cannot possibly it's almost like it's either, it's similar to a wish list, it's similar to a capital pro, you know, some of these may involve fist money, some of these might involve time, you know, there's a lot of things that, you know, I like to uh, understand, that, you know, I don't want to, I like to see results, but then we also have to be uh, prioritized correctly so that, you know. Okay. So, that's so my, is, is it fair for me to request you to put them in an order? I will do that for the next meeting. And, uh, well, could you have it, could you have it to Sheila in the next week? Yeah. So she can get it to me and then I will... Absolutely. Present the final no what we're going to work on I'd be at our next to. meeting. Is sure. that fair? Yes, it is. Okay, good. Did you want to? Oh, you look like you're about to. No, uh, the, the only statement that I'll say now to the whole board and the public that, that was the same statement I said to you this is your board. And the one thing I'd stress, having spent a lot of time on that board, is no one's ever going to 100% agree. No one's ever going to have 100% the same priorities. And there's nothing wrong with the divide and conquer. If certain areas are of certain interest to certain people, whether it be plastic bags, emergency management, public health care, you know, divide and conquer is a wonderful thing. Perhaps, you know, you're invested, and I personally am beginning to see the tidal wave of support going for banning plastic bags for a multitude of reasons. Um, you know, it, it's okay to have pet projects, I guess, is where I'm going with this. It's okay to be more invested in one thing and spend some time researching that and getting that information and then bringing it back and sharing it with the group. I, I agree with Mr. Newman. If you try to tackle all of this, there is a sizable amount of material there as well as economic needs and some other things to say, I'm going to accomplish this in the next year even. Um, but when you break it down into its smaller smaller components. Which is, yeah. which is what I have done. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. Give but again, it, it's okay that everyone's priorities aren't the same. Well, too. well, yeah, yes and no. I mean, people can have little pet projects of their own, but I, I think, quite honestly... But it's honestly, important to bring it back to the board. The decisions have to be made to a board. It's okay to investigate, get information, but you yeah. you have to come back and make a decision yeah. as a group. No no member can function on, on their own. That's both inappropriate and actually right. illegal. So. Yeah, sure. and, and given some of the challenges that we have encountered as a board in the last year, I think we need to fo refocus, and that's why... I, I want to work on an issue at a time. Not to say that we won't be looking at other issues, but I'm I'm good with that. <laughs> All right. All right. Okay. I don't have the list to it sounds like you have a plan. At the end of the week. At the end of this week. Like yes. Awesome. Okay. With that, Mr. Newman, I'll you make have... a motion to uh, adjourn. At six twenty seven. All right. Yeah. I'll second that motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye.
Excuse me. Art, good to have you here. I bought a new vehicle, so I wasn't focused as much on this apologize for that. That's all right. That's, <laughs> right. That's the only reason. It wasn't. It wasn't even not focused. You were you were getting the run around, and you were checking this, and then the. I, I felt bad. He had he had he had to put a bit of work into getting his new vehicle. Mm -hmm. What'd you get? A uh, brand new 